Okay, so this video is in response to an email I sent out to a group of people who are in my email or newsletter group when I asked them whether or not I should get back into doing some a uh, couple of workshops. I've had a two year break, uh, so this video is explaining uh, my decision and how I came to that decision. Okay, so just to clarify then what I mean by a workshop. In my own example, this would be a case of where I've decided to put on a one or two day event. I would decide on the content, what the theme was going to be, uh, where we were going to be doing it, you know, where, what studio, uh, who the model was, and so on and so on and so on. And then once I've decided that, I'd then advertise the ticket availability on my website. People would then go to the website, buy a ticket and then come along on the day and it would run like that. So that's what I mean by workshop. What I'm not talking about is uh, seminars, speaking engagements, maybe training events for particular kind of groups that have requested it. Not talking about anything like that at all. That is a, a big part of my business model. What we're talking about here is what we've all grown to be kind of accepting is the definition uh, of a traditional workshop. Now I really didn't expect this, but I kind of get it why some people may have thought this was the case when I first of all emailed everyone to ask, you know, should I or should I not do workshops? Some people may have thought that this was really a kind of sneaky bit of advertising and me fishing to sort of see what kind of reception would I get if I put on a workshops? What is the kind of demand for it? And then sure enough, once I've got the replies, Bizarrely, two uh, workshops were advertised, they'd get filled up and away I'd go. So uh, that isn't the case, all right? It's not the case at all. This was genuinely me wanting to find out what you think. Um, and I can say that in you know wholeheartedly because the decision I've made is actually that I will not be doing workshops. So you can see this was not a fishing exercise, any sneak advertising, I won't be doing workshops. So, so now you know that I'm not going to be doing workshops, I thought I'd put this video together just to explain why uh, as quickly and easily as I could. I had so many replies, you can see, you know, just some of them here, I had so, whoops, so many replies from people, uh, but all I can say is I read every single reply and I did start to try to reply uh, to those people as well that had taken the time to email me back but you know I physically cannot sit and spend all the time replying to everybody however much I'd like to so I'm kind of hoping that you're okay with this that by me putting this video together it's kind of me replying to you to say look thanks for thanks for responding to my question uh, but this is a decision I've made and this is why I've made it so I hope you're okay with that. Okay, so let me explain then the reason why I've decided not to do workshops. But before I do, I just need to just kind of preface that with a, a bit of a disclaimer uh, that in no way, shape or form, what I'm kind of going to go through now is that aimed at anybody in particular. You know, I've got friends all around the world that run workshops and they've been doing it for a while and they're incredibly successful at it. My decision not to run workshops uh, for the foreseeable future is based purely on um, experiences and maybe I guess even mistakes and practices that I kind of employed when I was doing workshops that left me feeling that I wasn't 100% happy with how the days ran. Uh, sure, they were, you know, they were great days, but it didn't feel good to me that there would always be somebody within the group that didn't get everything they wanted from the workshop. So um, yeah, like I say, not aimed at anybody in particular. This is purely based on my own experiences. So the fact that you can't please everybody just doesn't sit right with me. You know, I'm, I thoroughly enjoy training. That is a big part of my business model. So if I'm finding that people are spending their hard earned cash that they've, you know, they've worked for, they're spending time away from their family when they've finally got a day off, to then come and spend a one day or two days with me going through some photography and, and post-production training. If they then go away not feeling that they've got what they wanted from it, 
it really doesn't sit well with me and it just made me, makes me feel very, very uncomfortable. But honestly, short of giving people uh, extra one-to-one -one focused attention at the end of a workshop, for those people that didn't kind of get it, I don't really know how you can ever resolve this. I don't see how you can ever make sure that everybody gets something from it that they actually wanted. There will always be people that have got different skill levels. There will always be people, no matter how you try to qualify people to come along, there will always be somebody that either feels that the content was too basic for them, or maybe it was a little too advanced and it kind of went over their head. That will always be the case no matter how you try to qualify them. So the fact that you're always going to have somebody there who didn't feel they got their money's worth, for me just didn't and doesn't feel right. But you know, I haven't got the answers for this. I don't really know how you could qualify people for that. Maybe uh, that's why I like doing the training days for specific groups of people who've, uh, you know, a group of friends or a group of work colleagues who are working on a specific kind of project and they need to learn a certain skill. Those ones I absolutely love because it's very, very focused on a particular kind of training uh, package, I guess. But when it's a workshop for anybody to come along to learn, you're always going to have people who don't feel they're going to get what they want. And I don't like that. That just doesn't feel right. Now, one thing I really, uh, one thing I didn't really like about workshops as well, certainly the way that I ran them, and I kind of know from, you know, from all the replies that I've got here that I'm not alone in how I used to do this, but by the very nature of what a workshop is, you get maybe 12 or, you know, 12 to 15 people who come along, um, so you've got all those people, you've got all that content, there's only so many hours in the day. So it would kind of run that I would go through kind of teaching at the start of the day, would then discuss what we were going to do, and then the attendees would watch me set everything up. So I would explain about the background, I would explain about how to use the light stands, how to put a light on it, how to position the light for the lighting style that we wanted, doing the metering, uh, setting the computer up for tethered shooting, working with the model, and so on, and so on, and so on. I would go through the whole thing, and then I would take a few shots, and the people would see the results. Then what would happen is, the attendees would get up one at a time with their cameras, they'd come over, I'd give them a remote trigger, which they'd then put on top of their camera, I would tell them the settings to put into their camera, and then they would take three, four, or five shots, move out the way, the next person would come up and do the same thing. And it was like this conveyor belt system. And my question is, how on earth, and I, I could see this, how on earth can somebody really learn from that experience? If you are given everything on a plate, there you go, there's your settings, how could you possibly learn that? Now, if the workshop has been run in a way that it's very structured and very slow and very methodical, so that they felt that they could then take that kind of um, hand-to-mouth kind of teaching to then go and practice on their own time and get it right, then fantastic. I'm sure there were people that came along to mind that did that, and yeah, I did see the results of that happening when people would share things on social media. But generally, and I know this is a sweeping statement, but generally, how can people who come to a workshop trained that they've paid for really learn when it comes to them just coming up, giving the settings, taking a shot, and moving away? There will always be somebody who comes up, they don't quite get how you did something, but because maybe of peer pressure, maybe for fear of maybe sounding a little bit stupid, which is crazy, I know, but maybe not, maybe for that reason, they wouldn't want to put their hand up and say, I didn't quite get how you did that. Because people are generally kind of polite and want to, don't want to stand out, they'll just go up and they'll just go with the flow. But that means then, ultimately, at the end of the day, they're gonna leave not really knowing what it was that they did or not really getting it. So that, again, is just something, a big part of workshops that I didn't really like, this kind of conveyor belt system. I guess as well is that I've always, from the start, I've always tried to separate myself from the masses. Now, everybody wants to be a photographer these days, so a big part of what I do is trying to say, like, what is everybody doing? What can I do that's, do that's different? And that's why I've always employed that kind of attitude of, you know, if you want to develop your own style, you need to copy, because if you copy, eventually your own style will appear. But you talk about copying in the photography circles, and it's really frowned upon. But my argument always is, if you want to develop your own style, you've got to have a starting point. So I've always kind of gone for that, even though I was told you never should do it. And it's not done me too badly, you know, developing my own kind of style. But it seems to me that everybody 
sweeping statements, I know, but everybody seems to be running workshops. I remember when, uh, a few years back now, that it kind of felt to me that everybody wanted to be a photographer, well, not a photographer, and, but, a, but a wedding photographer. You know, you'd have somebody brand new, they'd not long been given a camera, they'd gone out and taken some decent pictures. Friends and family had said, wow, they're really great pictures, which is great, but then for some reason there was this kind of attitude of, hey, maybe I should set up in business and I'll do weddings as a very quick way of making money. And that used to drive me insane. This is the most expensive day of someone's life, the biggest day of their life. But to have the attitude of, I'll treat that as a way of making some quick money, I think is disgusting, absolutely disgusting, shameful. You should not ever think that. That of a, what's a quick way I can make some money? The focus should be on the attendee or the client, not on how much money you're gonna be making from it. Because if you're good enough, the money will follow anyway. I'm going off track. But now, it's kind of, there seems to have been a shift, certainly over the last couple of years, where yesteryear, people were kind of like, you know, new people were getting involved and they were doing weddings as a quick way of making money. Now it seems that they no longer do the wedding stuff, they're now starting to do the workshops. And again, I think that's, a, that's really risky. You know, you, you actually make, you're getting people to make a commitment of spending their money that they've worked really hard for, getting away from families, to come and spend the time to be taught by you. If they're gonna do that, you damn well better make sure that you're good. You damn well better nail it for them so that they feel they've got their money's worth. Because if not, that's bad for them anyway, to have people leaving feeling that, like they've wasted their money. That's, that's bad enough. But, you know, if you're in this for the long term, and I really hope you are, there is no quick fix in this. You know, this is all about building a solid business, if you're in business. This is all about building a solid business and building on it year upon year upon year. But if you're gonna be focused on saying, how can I make some quick money? That is such short-term thinking and incredibly damaging for your business and for you as a photographer. It takes a long time to build um, a good, good name and a good reputation, a long time and a lot of money. But it can take seconds to ruin a reputation. Now, I, I, I could go on, but I don't want this video to be too long. So, um, to, to sort of summarize, I won't be doing workshops. You've kind of heard the reasons why I don't want to do workshops, but I guess if anything, you could put all of those reasons why I'm not doing workshops under one kind of umbrella of being the reason why. And that is because it didn't feel right uh, or it didn't feel best for the attendee. One-to-ones, yeah, absolutely. They are perfect because they can be focused and cover exactly what that person needs. You can tailor-make them. Seminars, training days, all that kind of stuff, fantastic because you're getting out a certain message to certain people. They can then leave with material that you've given them, so on and so forth. But when you're running a hands-on workshop where you're expecting to get a group of people coming along to spend their money to then go away and learn, I think you know it's it's not something I want to do. It doesn't feel the best way to uh, to run a workshop. Now you know I'm saying now that I'll never you know I'm not doing them. Who knows in the future? You know never say never. In the future I may decide to do them again, but that will only happen if I manage to find a way that I can qualify people to come along so that I know when I'm running a workshop or a training day that the people there are all on the same kind of level. All right. Even now, when I say that, it just sounds crazy. It sounds like you're asking the impossible. But who knows, in the future, that may be possible. So I'll never say never, but for now, I won't be doing workshops. But number one, the overriding message is that the, the focus should always be on the attendee. If you're the kind of person that is always having that attitude of, how can I make some quick money? What's the, how much money will I make from doing this? If that is your number one focus, you're in this for the wrong reason, okay? And so it might sound corny, it might sound like I'm trying to be all kind of righteous and saying, oh look, I'm in this for the right reasons. But I, I honestly believe that I am. I'm in this for the long term. I love teaching, I love training. There is no better feeling that when you teach somebody something, they go, I never knew I could do that. When you can see that you've taken somebody from point A to point B, it is the ultimate payment. And yes, yeah, sure enough, being paid isn't a dirty word, but be paid knowing 
that what you've done is ethical and it's right and it's with all the best intentions. I don't want to sound like I'm kind of preaching here, but I'm hoping that this has been the best way that I can kind of let you know personally why I won't be doing workshops for now. My number one focus is and always, always has been on the attendee. And I don't want to be somebody that always comes across as being somebody that's got money on the brain. How much money can I make from this? In my own heart, I feel that if I put all the focus on what is right for the attendee or for the client, the money will follow anyway. What was that film, the old uh, Kevin Costner film? Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. So all I say is if you are looking at doing any kind of training, if you're looking at getting into photography in any way, shape or form, have your attendee and your client as number one. That way, I honestly feel that you'll be able to build the best business with the best reputation and you'll just go from strength to strength. So I kind of hope this all makes sense. I know it's maybe a little bit disjointed and what have you, but I needed to get it down on video, my reasons why. So um, again, thanks so much for all the replies that you sent through. Some of you sent reams of reply and I really do appreciate it. Some of you sent some horrendous stories uh, of experience that you've had uh, doing workshops. Uh, so I appreciate your honesty with that. You have been a massive help in me kind of finalizing what my decision is for the foreseeable future. So uh, there you go, I'll see you online. If you're not already a member of the newsletter or email group, please you know, feel free to join that. It's, uh, it's really growing the way that I like it. It's a very personal thing for me. It kind of makes it feel like I did when I was a kid that when we used to have pen pals and I used to write to people that were in France and Germany and I love that. So it's very much a, a community that, uh, that we're building at the minute and I'm really liking the way that's going. But again, thanks so much for all the replies. Hope this makes sense and I'll see you online.